Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking for Finextra TV and I'm joined by Peter Hazu of Microsoft and Ian McLennan of Finastra and we're chatting about trade finance modernization and how that incorporates many aspects of the trade finance ecosystem like digitalization, innovation, regulation, competition and inclusion. But first of all, let's say hello to our guests. Welcome both of you. Thanks, Debbie. May I start off? That was a long list I've just rolled off there, yeah, right? Completely, yeah. <laughs> so let's start off with a definition, first of all. Briefly, Pete, if I can come to you, mm -hmm. how would you describe trade modernization? Look, trade finance is a, a, a venerable, well-established business in banks. It's been around for a long time with well-established rules. Um, that said, the nature of trade changing now is really about data. Uh, a lot of the way it's been processed is very static data, documents, but the, the world of data and the insights of data and reasoning over the data, that's really the transformation. It's a core part of commerce in all banks, and it's really about time it gets more investment and more modernization. Mm. Data, data, data. So exactly. I pass that over to you, Ian. And particularly also, what do you think are the key features of a modernized trade platform? So I think you know, Peter made a, a great uh, definition of the modernization part there. I think if you look at the platform, I think you're, you're talking about scalable, performant, interoperable, easily deployable, um, extensible, and, and resilient. Yeah, that's what you're looking for in those platforms. And I think a key point that we'll come back to is interoperability mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. Now, what about the driving forces that are driving this modernization of trade finance, particularly within the global context that we all find ourselves in? Um, how would you describe those driving forces? Well, I think, as, as always, uh, one of the driving forces is cost efficiency. I think, you, you, you know, there's a lot of expectations from the corporates on the banks in regards to SLAs, turnaround efficiency there. I think also we have to talk about the trade finance gap. So in the last three, three years, the trade finance gap has widened by $800 billion. So it started at 1.7, it's now at 2.5 yeah. trillion. So actually that access to working capital into particularly micro and SME businesses is, is really key. So it's a driver, you see it from the, um, the ICC, the WTO and other organizations. And a key thing to call out there as well is um, it's not just the micro and the SME businesses that are disadvantaged. It's primarily, it's majorly as well female-led businesses. They are they are negatively impacted as well. So that's a big driver for the the modernisation of trade. And those drivers, would you call those challenges? Are there other challenges that we're facing? Well, there are there are certainly challenges. I mean, the nature of global trade and global supply chains, as we've seen throughout pandemic and now in the current changes uh, geopolitically is very challenged. It's a risk business. Mm. It's a low risk business. That's why trade finance is so important. But I would say that it, all of this trade finance contains so much data that's so valuable to all the parties, be they minority enterprises or the largest multinationals. It being a risk game, the insights that are there in those documents currently are just processed as paper. And, and, and the whole ecosystem is not benefiting from um, all the data that's available um, that can be of great use in counterparty risk, for example, and, and uh, performance risk and, and uh, throughout supply chain. So it's really, the, I think that's where the challenge is and also the opportunity is. I think another thing just on the yes. data that, that Peter is talking about, the, the, what we've seen as well, and we saw it in Cybos, and we've discussed this with a number of banks and other bodies at Cybos and subsequent since then, is actually the, the let me call it the skills and the resource gap mm -hmm. that we're now seeing in terms of particularly documentary trade, experience leaving the industry. So I think we're also going to talk a bit about how technology can help on that basis around about document compliance checking. You know, I mentioned interoperability earlier on. How can you bring all of the parts together in our trade ecosystem to harmonize that data and drive it yep, forward. Exactly. It's, yeah. a, it's a very traditional model, uh, operating model, the way it's been processed um, with greatly skilled people yep. examining paper documents to try to determine, you know, if they're in compliance, if there's also fraud, money laundering, all of these human skills, but they're quite expensive. It's not operationally efficient. Mm. And trade is growing exactly as Ian said. So yep. there, there's, the issue is how to how can technology help to really open up um, this as a vital business for 
banks to really be building instead of, well, it's paper or it's going to go away eventually. It's not the case. It's vibrant and it's growing. And technology um, holds a lot of the modernization potential in that. So let's go now to that technology that can, you know, drive that potential further. So digital technologies like blockchain, AI, cloud computing. So how do they transform trade finance, particularly the processes and the products and the other issues that you've discussed? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, we have to discuss the B word, right? Blockchain. Uh, I think blockchain is a great tool. I think what we've seen, you know, I, I chaired a panel in 2019 on, on particularly blockchain and trade networks. What we've seen is um, there we talked about interoperability and adoption. I think that what we've seen is a, a number of failures in the blockchain area from a trade perspective, but we've also seen some successes come through, particularly around about document ownership and, and that sort of functionality. So I think the future's bright for that sort of application. I think when you look at um, AI and then um, cloud computing, if we talk about AI, we've already used AI in document sure. compliance checking. Sure. I think you see it much more now in terms of knowledge management and support. We're working mm -hmm. with, with particular um, suppliers and clients on that basis. We also see discussion now in AI around about how can we have um, conversational interfaces with um, with a, an operational context there. I think cloud computing just actually brings scale of resourcing easily, easily right. addressable, easily available. It's all uh, very good from that perspective. Look, technology really is an enabler. That's really what it is. Uh, there's no doubt that there's lots of new technology, many new technologies, not just blockchain AI, but now there's generative AI for reasoning over large data sets, large language models. There's no question there's lots of technology. I think the question is how can it best be applied for operational efficiency, re risk reduction, and digitalization for the customer experience, and actually giving the end customers the benefit of those insights. Yeah, it helps banks process, but it's really the benefits are across the ecosystem. No doubt, things like blockchain, that didn't take off when they originally conceived super good technology, but it, it, it didn't find it's, it's the right scale um, in an ecosystem for adoption. Okay, so maybe it'll come back around, but things like artificial intelligence for the process and paper, especially given the, the, uh, the talent uh, pool issues that uh, Ian referred to, super, super mm. crucial. Yeah. And I think also, how can it be best applied? Mm. But I think that's the bit. I think what we, you know, when Peter was talking there, is, is how we knit together the various technologies because we talk about the trade ecosystem and it, you know, it's, it's super wide in terms of you've got three flows essentially associated with the trade ecosystem. You've got the physical movement of goods, mm -hmm. you've got the documentary flow, and then you've got the financial flows as well. Yeah. And it's how you knit all three of those components together. I mean, what I discussed there was yeah. documentary trade, but essentially on supply chain finance as well. There's a number of different let's call them ecosystem providers, now spanning, you know, participation, document compliance checking, ownership, you know, th the list goes on. And, and what the technology gives us is the ability to bring those together. And I'm going to use the I word again, interoperability is a key, key challenge that we have to face into uh, between all of those systems. Mm -hmm. And actually, if I could, building on Ian's point exactly, look, I mean, trade finance has been traditionally a banking process, but actually, the broader supply chain, banks do supply chain finance, but it's really the technology is going to permit really the interoperability between all of the players, logistical companies, manufacturers, retailers. It's really a cross industry issue because supply chain is a global cross industry issue. And so that's, I think, a lot of where the benefit will come. It's not, shouldn't be looked upon just as a bank trade finance paper processing business. It's much broader. And that's very relevant to clients as well. Yeah. So define for me then, please, what do you mean by the trade finance stack? Okay. So we term trade finance stack as thinking about it. A lot of the, to the topics we've talked about today, right? So from an infrastructure level, so like cloud computing, the applications that we provide, the application um, operations, and then the business operations that sit on top of that, we've defined that as the trade finance stack. So that is essentially the whole suite of technology, 
uh, applications and people operations that you would need to run a trade finance business. So that means that you can address a lot of the challenges we've mentioned by having a stack in place that businesses can use. They don't have to, to build it themselves, we can build it for them mm -hmm. and we can take it all the way from underlying infrastructure and data centers right the way through to business process outsourcing from a, from a trade services perspective. And I think one of the key points um, in that, it's we mentioned of cloud and, and it's really about a, a tool set. It's not about just data center and where it gets processed and what have you. It's really about a broad set of technologies that are available uh, to make trade finance in the world of supply chain more agile, its ability to solve more problems with more insights and lower risk um, at lower processing costs, of course. So there's a lot, there's a lot, it's not, it's important to not just say, oh, cloud, it's, you know, it's one of the technologies. It's, it's an underpinning platform for really the modernization and of course the digitization. But then I think on tool set as well, we think about not just you know, the products that we provide, say, in Finastro or Microsoft, it's much more about the ecosystem. How can you bring those together to add value to the, you know, our customers in the banks, but the bank's customers as well? And, and also what it allows is, the stack allows you to bring other providers on quicker, mm. normally than banks do via procurement and their onboarding process. Now, if I talk to various banks, they're like, well, the easiest we can do this is nine months. And it might be longer and it might be 18 months, whereas we can have those relationships in place Absolutely. just now, right? Mm -hmm. mm, and I'm picking up on a word you mentioned earlier, which is agility. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also the part that you're not relying upon your own technology teams looking at the market and scanning the market. Peter and I spend our time mm -hmm. scanning the market and looking at different providers and how we want to, you know, interface with them directly or partner with them around about other opportunities, mm. for instance, in the, the outsourcing space. Yeah. And the important thing about agility is not just the bank concept. I mean, banks always, I was formerly a banker, it takes too long time to market, et cetera. That's not, that, agility will uh, help with that, but it's really underlying client agility, just-in-time supply chains. Uh, we see this in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in many industries, how they manufacture things, their approach to being agile themselves. So of course the banking element of that supply chain and finance has to also be very agile. Wonderful, well thank you. It's been a really lively discussion. Mm -hmm. I know we could go on, mm -hmm. but may I say Peter and Ian, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, David. Thank you. Thank you.